Welcome to Center Church, where we plan to stir up the Pentecost spirit today. If you're visiting with us for the first time, we invite you to take a look at our Facebook page or on our website. Information about that can be found um, at Center Church of South Hadley. Coffee chat is today at 11. Follow the Zoom instructions. And last week we had a great coffee chat. It lasted about an hour, but you could spend just 10 minutes sharing a cup of coffee or tea and seeing uh, new and familiar faces. The first phase forward task force met and our first priority is ensuring the building is indeed closed, except for the recordings by the musicians, the office where Thea works, and the cleaning done by our sexton. Our doors are closed, but our ministry is open. We encourage you to complete the surveys that we sent out about two weeks ago and return them online or snail mail. Now we could begin to feel the Pentecost winds. Now may we remember the Pentecost story as we sing the hymn 272. and concerns. We're so grateful that we can call ourselves community, a community that is open to more to join us. We invite you to take a look at those names listed in the bulletin. Audrey H. has COVID. This Audrey is the one living at Loomis Reed's Landing. She's doing fairly okay and her voice sounded strong. Michael M., Joy W.'s grandson, recently had surgery and is still in need of our prayers. Prayers for our country as we are all still reeling from our history of slavery, lynching, Jim Crow laws, and plain old racial injustice. Prayers are for African-American George Floyd, who was placed in a chokehold when arrested in Minneapolis and died hours later. Riots have erupted due to the injustice. The mayor of the city said, being a black shouldn't be a death sentence. Breonna Taylor, a 26-year-old emergency medical technician in Kentucky, was shot in her home in March during 
a mistaken narcotics investigation. Brianna was a young woman who had yet to lead a full life and who had worked to save the lives of others. Now may we pause, perhaps listen to the nature, listen to our own hearts as we turn to God in prayer. Ever creating God, where, oh, where are you? We marvel at how the rhododendron and irises are beginning to bloom and how the canopy of trees engulfs us. Truly your artwork offers beauty and eases, relieves our minds. Your hope is overflowing as shown to us in those graduating. May their dreams continue to be seeded with love and support. This week we have slipped and know that you still receive us as a beloved child when we turn to you. Thank you for your grace. Despite our greed and in spite of ignorant views, may we unite together to care for one another. Bless those regaining physical and mental strength. Bless those who are without home, food, safety, and those stuck in sanctuary where there appears no way out. And we ask all those who have lost their job, jobs to be blessed by you. May we unite our prayers around the leaders of the country so bipartisan ways shine and racism is addressed. Now hear our prayers silently. We ask this in the name of Jesus, who when praying, taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The scripture reading for today is Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. A sound like a strong wind. When the Feast of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Without warning, there was a sound like a strong wind, gale force. No one could tell where it came from. It filled the whole building. Then, like a wildfire, the Holy Spirit spread through their ranks, and they started speaking in a number of different languages as the Spirit prompted them. Wow, did you catch that Pentecost wind? My hair, hair was surely caught up with it. There. I have no idea how the early followers sustained the messages and ways of Jesus with just a few glimpses of him after he died. Let's place ourselves in their shoes. Well, in fact, we are now in their shoes. How are we gonna sustain this pandemic living? While there's no map, there are many voices of 
polar opposition. My twin daughters living near Albany are close friends with a college physical trainer who says, this COVID is a farce. I'm not gonna wear my mask and I'm going to attend church this week. I have the right to express myself. Hmm. He has a lovely family and is super devoted to church. So are we, but I believe most of us duly desire to follow Jesus's commandment to love the neighbor. To do, to do that is to keep the neighbor and ourselves safe and healthy. To do that is to hold off attending church until there is a steady decline of cases. To do that, experience a decline, means for us all to wear masks, keep our distance, and wash our hands. Back to the early church. People were talking in different languages and didn't understand one another. Each geographical area had a different take about how to follow Jesus. Just like how our states in the Union differ over when to open and when to remain sheltered. On that day of Pentecost, there was a surprise. A wind was as strong as a gale force with an explosive sound. That was their first blessing. A mighty wind and sound. Then a second blessing occurred. Wildfire burst through spreading flames of the Holy Spirit so that each spoke in her or his own language. The Spirit prompted them. It would have been a disaster, right? We know how language divides. People misinterpret. However, I imagine Pentecost as how Woodstock was 50 years ago. People came to Woodstock from everywhere, from all walks of life, wanting to converge, to hear incredible music, and to experience peace. Woodstock, too, could have been a disaster. Like Woodstock, the early disciples gathered for direction, for hope. To their surprise, the Holy Spirit touched them with a new language, a new way, a language where it is more essential for us to come together than to be divided. We are learning a new common language where we need to think of a greater whole, not just ourselves. We are learning a new common language where we will be stronger, not as black or white, queer or straight, hungry or fully fed, but as people touched by the Holy Spirit. May this new Pentecost language roll off our lips into our hearts so that God's realm is revealed. Invite the Holy Spirit inside and share it outwardly. Amen. Hi there. Hi. We are with Rachel Alley tonight and um, we are so grateful that she has been willing to be interviewed because of her job is quite essential and quite interesting. So first, Rachel, could you tell us a bit about your job? I'm a child life specialist on the pediatric unit at Bay State Children's Hospital in Springfield. And what that is, most people don't always know what a child life specialist is. They know what a nurse is or a respiratory therapist, but um, 
we work to try to minimize any negative effects or traumatization from healthcare experiences for children and families. And we do that with normalizing the environment through play, uh, preparation for any tests or procedures, and sort of translating the medical world for them to understand depending on how old they are, where they are, and a lot of family support, patient and family support. They still have the basic things that they need. Like we can still have parents at the bedside. They're, they're still getting the other support that they were getting previously, like um, translations of medical jargon that they don't always understand. Um, and not so much that healthcare is always traumatizing to them, but they understand it less and they have not necessarily developed coping techniques and things like that as children. Some adults haven't either, but <laughs> if you can help them at children, as children, they'll carry it into their adulthood. I imagine that. But what has prepared you for this time and place? We've taken what we've done before and adapted it to the constraints that we've been, that have been placed upon us by the pandemic. And um, we've had certainly not similar in the scope of, of restrictions, but during a regular flu season, we have restrictions such as children under 12 years old siblings cannot come up to the unit and visit their brothers or sisters. So we've gotten creative previous years on how to maintain those connections, be it with FaceTime or other ways to maintain connections with brothers or sisters who may not see each other for a, a day or two days or a week or whatever it might be. In this time, what are some of your fears or challenges or wow moments? Um, the challenges that I found were in the beginning when everything was changing so quickly. Um, you could literally get an update in the morning um, and then something would be different by 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock and it would be different again by four o'clock. Um, so for a couple of weeks until things settled into a little bit more of a routine, as more information was coming out, um, as more information about proper uh, personal protective equipment was coming out, uh, that was a little frustrating because it was always it was sometimes just what was available at that time, um, and then it would change, um, or a protocol would change, or something like that. So that for me was difficult because it was just keeping up with everything that was changing. Um, and also, how do we support the kids and the families based on all these systemic changes that were happening? As far as challenges at home, it's just been kind of trying to maintain some kind of normalcy for my own kids and my own family, um, which has had its own challenges with two teenagers, um, but trying to keep them on a normal schedule, caught up with schoolwork, um, them getting used to us being around quite a bit more than we usually have been. Um, although Greer and I have both maintained working full time, luckily, and we're fortunate and blessed with that. But we've all kind of figured out who needs what space at what day, time of the day, in what part of the house. And so it's kind of working its way out. It's had very many blessings also, so, because we've taken long rides that have generated conversations that we might not have had before. Um, so those, those were the, the blessings in, the, in our life, personal life part of it. One of the other big challenges I found or a moment in it in the pandemic time in the beginning was when my colleagues were being deployed to different parts of the hospital um, and not knowing or trying to figure out how to best support them. Uh, pediatrics has been spared for the most, not for the most part, but um, relatively speaking to the older generation and the adult world. So to have colleagues, be it a child life colleague or a nursing colleague or close friends that I've worked with for 25 years or whatever, not be able to see them for three or four weeks because their shifts are on adult floors in very, very difficult situations um, and kind of different schedules and stuff. That was difficult to figure out how best to support them and feeling bad, not bad for them because they're very driven in their profession and they mm -hmm. want to do that and they want to be there. Um, but just had to support them. I remember one time our, my friend Joe came back to our unit and I was so excited to see him and I wanted to give him a hug and be like, I'm sorry, 
you had to go through some of the things you've gone through, but I had to catch myself, so, but um, we've all stayed in touch in different ways and supported each other in different ways. How do you integrate home life? You leave the hospital and you drive into your driveway. What happens next? Um, part of that has been part of learning how to do that in my profession over the years that I've been doing it anyways, um, and dealing with some of the things that I deal with at work, which may not always be pleasant, and how to separate that from home. But this time has been a little bit more difficult, obviously, you know, I now take my shoes off in my garage, I leave my coat out in the garage, I shower right away when I get home for the most part with, and bag my uniforms, which I didn't use to do. Will that be the forever norm? I don't know. Um, or will we get comfortable with what happens in the future and kind of go back to what we did before? We'll see. But not knowing what we could be bring, I could be bringing home and not knowing a lot of the details about how this virus runs, it was an error, erring on the side of caution. Then, mm -hmm. then not. Where have you experienced the glimmer of God Oh, I think I've experienced it both professionally and personally um, within the first couple days of all this or a week or so. I came home one night and there was a yard lawn, a lawn sign on our front lawn. And granted, the three other people I lived with were in the house. They still had no idea who had placed it. <laughs> um, uh, and, come, and I still didn't know for a number of weeks that it was just a good friend of ours that had knew us and a couple other medical people and had gone around and placed them on their yard, um, which was really appreciated. Um, I see it at work all the time. I have a colleague from my department who deployed from our unit as a child life specialist to work in the adult units on the COVID units. Um, as um, we do adult consults on a regular basis sometimes, but her focus was to help to try to maintain connection for those COVID pa patients with COVID um, with their family members because they can have no visitors. There are no visitors in any part of the adult hospital, only for children under the age of 18 get a visitor, which is the parents. But um, if any of us were in the hospital, even for something else, we would not be able to have a visitor or a family member in with us. So she deployed to the adult units um, to help maintain those connections. Mm -hmm. And those connections were times for family members from a home to be able to FaceTime and say goodbye to a loved one or something like that. So there were a lot of different stories that she would bring back and kind of without breaking HIPAA, sort of tell us a little bit about something and you kind of think that was kind of God working in this way or that was God working in that way or there's a reason that that happened this way and, and God's hand was involved in that somehow. Um, mm. I, sacred I think, ground. Yeah, very sacred, you know. Um, I think just the work that I know that colleagues and friends were doing in different parts of the hospital at different times um, was definitely influenced by. Mm -hmm. by yeah. Well, thank you for your work, your your the integrity in which you approach it, and the love that you have, the passion for your work, and thank for you. your family, Rachel. Thank you. Thank you. I wonder if Pentecost, the first Pentecost was as warm as it is today. Well, anyways, our frontline interviewees are asked, can you think of a time or something in which you're so full of gratitude or a time when you've experienced a glimmer of God? Easily, easily they share how they saw God in a person or at work. Maybe for you, you see God in art or when you've experienced an accomplishment or when you've been ill or you're recovering from your illness and celebrate how much better you feel. Now may we multiply those things for which we're grateful, those times in which 
we encountered God and blessed them. Now, may we ask God to bless these gifts that in our giving and our sharing and receiving, we will create a community of care and justice. As I went down in the valley to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear that sorry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, sisters, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, sisters, let's go down, down in the valley to pray. As I went down in the valley to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear that starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, sisters, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, brothers, let's go down, down in the valley to pray.
The Holy Spirit has touched down beside us, around us, and through us with wind and fire. May God bless us with a new reality where all, as in all, join together to unite in loving the neighbor. Go in peace.